Chapter one, matter measurement and problem solving. What do you think? What do you think is the most important idea in all of human knowledge? We could probably spend a whole semester talking about that. But if we limit ourselves to the topic of science, probably the most important idea is this one. The properties of matter are determined by the properties of molecules and atoms. That is a very significant idea. How the atoms and the molecules behave, those smallest particles of matter, affect how the matter as a whole behaves. If the atoms and molecules are different, then the matter itself is different. Um, you know, I've got raspberry lemonade, that's what this is, in my, in my cup. So it's sugar-free, so there's some artificial sweetener in there. If the artificial sweetener molecules were different, they might not taste sweet. And then what's the point of putting them in there? If they were altered a little bit more, um, they might actually be real sugar, and then there'd be calories in there. And then I, uh, that wouldn't be good, because I drink way too much of that stuff. So the properties of water molecules affect how the water behaves. Water is a liquid at room temperature. It freezes and expands as it freezes because of the nature of the water molecules. So because we can now understand so much about how molecules behave, that allows us to control how matter itself behaves. There have been some awesome advances in plastics and in even in motor oil, motor oil, the synthetic motor oil, changes its viscosity in response to the temperature of the engine. It's amazing because we understand what the molecules are doing. Let's talk about a molecule. This is carbon monoxide. This is just an example. I'm not going to test you on this. Carbon monoxide consists of one carbon atom and one oxygen atom, and they're bonded together. Think two balls superglued together, right? Carbon monoxide is a pollutant in the air. You've probably heard stories, they seem to come up on the news every winter, about a family uh, where one or more members has died because of carbon monoxide poisoning. If your gas appliance is not vented correctly and isn't getting enough oxygen, instead of the gas burning and producing carbon dioxide, it produces carbon monoxide, and that can be fatal if you inhale too much of that. In your blood, you have um, a very large molecule called hemoglobin. And this is what grabs the oxygen in your lungs and carries it through your bloodstream and releases it into the parts of your body that need oxygen. The problem with carbon monoxide is that the hemoglobin really likes carbon monoxide. And so it grabs the carbon monoxide and doesn't let go of it, and then it can't carry oxygen. So carbon monoxide kills you by basically suffocating you. Even if there's oxygen around, the hemoglobin prefers to grab onto the carbon monoxide. Those atoms that compose carbon monoxide, atoms are the submicroscopic particles. They are the fundamental building blocks of ordinary matter. I like to use a lot of analogies because a lot of the stuff we talk about in chemistry is very abstract and uh, hard to understand. And so I use a lot of analogies to everyday life. So I like to think of atoms as being a lot like Lego bricks. You all know what Lego bricks are? We have like a gazillion of them at my house because we've been collecting them for like 20 years. And so we have lots of Lego blocks. When you build with Legos, you can combine them in different ways and you take them apart. But you don't actually break the Legos themselves the individual bricks stay the same. And that's the way the atoms are. They're the fundamental, the smallest building block of matter. It's actually unusually in, unusual in nature to see or to have free atoms, just individual atoms floating around. There are some elements that do that, but most atoms combine with other atoms and form molecules. So a molecule is just two or more atoms that are attached to each other. So think of, you know, Lego blocks being stuck together. So carbon monoxide, bad stuff. 
carbon dioxide. This is something that we exhale every time we breathe. There's a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and it's fine. The plants need the carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide doesn't kill us unless there's no oxygen present. This looks pretty similar to the carbon monoxide molecule, doesn't it? What's different about it? It has an extra oxygen. It's got two oxygen atoms instead of one. That's kind of a small change, right? Two oxygens or one oxygen with one carbon. And yet that little difference in the molecule makes a huge difference in the property of the matter. Carbon dioxide won't kill you, but carbon monoxide will. So to understand the substances around <coughs> us, you know, why is this um, cart shelf, why does it make this noise when I pound on it? Why is it magnetic? My stylus sticks to it. You know, it's shiny and smooth. That all has to do with individual particles that compose it. So understanding these particles is the central goal of chemistry. And one way we can define chemistry is the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules.